Welcome back to Commonwealth Stadium here in Lexington, Kentucky, where we are expecting a capacity crowd in excess of 56,000 for this game between Clemson and Kentucky. Steve Zabriskie along with Rick Forzano with you. And in talking about the Clemson offense, Rick, they are a unit that is still struggling, really, to find themselves and to really put it together. Although they are a veteran unit, they have not been very successful offensively, at least not as successful as they, as they would have liked to have been. They are led by Homer Jordan, a fine and veteran quarterback. And when they do get things going, it's Jordan who really operates them and bring, comes up with the big play. He is the key, Homer Jordan, a young man from Athens who's thrown for three touchdown passes and run for two. He's a guy that has to do it, and I'll tell you, he can run with a football. Kentucky must contain Homer Jordan. They cannot let him get outside. And he loves to throw to Perry Tuttle, number 22, who is going to break all of Jerry Butler's records. All he needs is 331 more yards, and he will do it all. Perry Tuttle is a complete receiver. He blocks, runs with the ball, catches the ball in the crowd. Perry Tuttle, a premier receiver, no question about it. Up front, they've got some big guys led by Lee Nanny. Lee Nanny, is he strong? He plays the right offensive tackle. He lifts 515 pounds. I'll tell you, this guy, they will run on that right side. And when they run, I'll tell you, they like to run from the I formation. But you're going to see Jordan at quarterback, Tuttle at the receiver right there. And you're also going to see Tuttle running a lot of motion. They're going to try to throw off the Kemp Clemson defense, or the Kentucky defense, excuse me. From the eye, they like to take Jordan and sprint him to the outside and throw that little out cut to Tuttle and then take Jordan, sprint him down the line. He'll either keep or kick out to that halfback. But Jordan is the key. Defensively, that unit has been their strength. They have a swarming defense. And as you can tell from these statistics, they have forced a lot of turnovers. They have 18 takeaways already, and they've only allowed six points per game. That is great defense. They are led in the middle by a fine veteran linebacker who is really the leader of their defense. Jeff Davis from Greensboro, his coach Danny Ford, calls him the toughest player he's ever been associated with, and that is saying something. Terry Kennard, the free safety, from this free safety position has made 27 solo tackles. Now that's making a lot of tackles. Jeff Bryan, number 99, the, another emotional leader, he gets to the football. He's very quick for a big man. That's a look at the Clemson Tigers and some of the key people to look for as far as they are concerned. Coming up next here on College Football Today, we'll be bringing you a look at the Wildcats of the University of Kentucky. Stay with us here on ABC. Well, if Clemson is an offense that's been struggling a little bit, what do you have to say about Kentucky? They're really trying to find themselves, and really a more accurate statement might be they're still trying to find an offense. Well, they certainly are, and they've only averaged oh, a little over two yards per carry, and you can't win football games on offense doing that, no question about it. They have a couple of quarterbacks that they use, one for running and one for passing. We'll probably see both of them today. Well, Terry Henry, he is the runner. And Randy Jenkins, he is the passer. But as you point out, we will see both of them today. Here you see Randy Jenkins throwing to his favorite receiver, Jim Campbell. Now, Jim Campbell is the key when they are going to throw the football. And they're going to run three tight ends. Jim Campbell has averaged 20 yards per catch. He is a fine receiver. But it's the guys that do the blocking are 91, Todd Shadowin and Rob Mangus, the other tight end. We don't know whether we're going to see three offensive backs and one wide receiver or two offensive backs and two wide receivers from Kentucky today. That's how much they're still up in the air about what to do offensively. But we know what we're going to see if we see three offensive backs. Well, when, when they go on offense, they are going to run the tight T formation, which you just don't see in college football today. They're going to have three backs in there. Terry Henry is going to be running the ball from there. They're going to have the two tight ends that we mentioned. Here they are. They like the inside belly fake the ball to the fullback, and then give the ball to the tailback or give the ball to the fullback. When they're going to throw the ball, you're going to see Randy Jenkins, number 12 at quarterback. They're going to throw the ball from split backs, again, trying to go to Jim Campbell or going to double wing. You'll see one back in the backfield. You'll see a lot of motion coming across here, and they'll flood this zone. Well, defensively, as far as Kentucky is concerned, if it has been Clemson's strength, it has certainly been the savior as far as Kentucky's concerned. Oh, they have played good defense. The only problem they've had is in the fourth quarter, as you see, they've allowed 29 points, and I think it's because they've tired. Here's a look at some of the key people as far as defense is concerned. They, too, are led in the middle by a fine linebacker in Kevin McClellan. 
Kevin McClellan, a young man from Massillon, Ohio, did not play last week, and they think that's one of the reasons that they weren't able to hold on to that game against Kansas. Andy Moles of free safety has 20 tackles from his free safety position, also returns punts. The big man in the middle, number 57, Epley Brooks from Columbus, Ohio, he can get to the football. We have a special presentation today as far as the national anthem is concerned. We're going to have a young man who's playing fullback today and should be starting in the backfield, Richard Abraham. He's number 45, and he is a young man who is going to be in uniform and singing the national anthem for us to open this game this afternoon here at Commonwealth Stadium in Kentucky. It'll be interesting not only to see what kind of a job he does, what kind of a thrill it is for him, but how the crowd reacts. Now here's Richard Abraham starting fullback today for Kentucky singing our national anthem. pound junior fullback Richard Abraham out of Paducah Kentucky be sure to stay tuned next for NCAA college football Clemson and Kentucky after this word from your local stations today from Clemson, Kentucky ABC Sports presents the 14th ranked Clemson Tigers against the University of Kentucky Wildcats and this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. By Goodyear, makers of Arriva, even its footprint tells you it's different. By Light Beer, everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by Mr. Goodwrench and the General Motors Parts Division, who help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Welcome back to Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky, where the Clemson Tigers come on to the field. Their record, as you see, 3-0, 14th ranked in both polls in the nation, coached by Danny Ford in his third year with a record of 17-9. and And the orange will be much in evident in the stadium today as they have a good contingent of fans who have made the trip up from South Carolina. And here come the Wildcats of the University of Kentucky, coached by Fran Percy. They are 1-2. and two losing a couple of games they felt with some breaks and some better offense they could have won. Fran Kersey in his ninth year with a record of 45, 45 and two. They love their football here in Kentucky and we are expecting a capacity house of in excess of 56,000. 
There is hardly any wind blowing in the stadium today. And the temperature should be right about 60 degrees at game time. As you can see, the sun is out. It's a cool and clear afternoon. Autumn has really come here in the last two days to the heart of the bluegrass country. Kentucky has won the toss. They have elected to receive the football. And Rick, we talked in the pregame show about what we can expect to see, particularly offensively from Kentucky. We really don't know how they're going to start out. Well, I think they're going to go with probably a standard running game, maybe go from the T formation, then open it up a little bit with a pass. But I think you're going to see the run first from Kentucky. Both teams trying to get their offenses on track. Even though Clemson is 3-0, they have not been happy so far with the way they have played offensively. Kentucky, of course, we've detailed those problems for you in the pregame, and they're looking to change that pattern as well. We'll be back with the kickoff between Clemson and Kentucky in just a minute. The kicker. Donald Iguabike will kick it off as Terry Kennard will start the kick coverage team for him. And back deep to receive for Kentucky, Tom Petty, number four, and George Adams, number 33, who is nearest to us. Iguabike's kickoff comes down to Petty, one yard deep. Still struggling for yardage as he gets it out short of the 20. They'll mark it at about the 19, a 19 yard return. Randy Cheek, number 55, a senior linebacker, made the tackle. It'll be first and 10, Kentucky at their own 19. Offensively, Randy Jenkins at quarterback with George Adams, Richard Abraham, who sang the anthem, Rick Massey and Alan Watson are the wide receivers. Up front, the tight end Jim Campbell, a good one, especially when they're throwing the football. You know, not be in there when they're running with Corbin Williams, Rishnak, Bond, and Smith, the front line. Jenkins rolling in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, number 86, Alan Watson, the split end. Number 43, Terry Kennard, was defending on the play. The incompletion will make it second down and 10, Kentucky still at their 19. As I said, Steve, they'll probably come on out and run the ball, and here they throw it right <laughs> off the bat. Andy Hedden, Jeff Bryant, William Perry at 300 pounds, a freshman, Dan Benish, and Joe Glenn, the front five in the odd front for the Clemson defense. Second down and 10, Kentucky. Jenkins resets his backfield. Adams, the ball carrier. Adams to about the 26-yard line before he's bumped out of bounds. Number 82, Danny Triplett, the right side linebacker, made the tackle. Abraham with a good block to get Adams to the outside. Abraham, the other running back. The Clemson defense and their secondary and linebackers have really been outstanding with Davis, Triplett, Rose, Childers, Kennard, and Hall back there, not only covering passes, but they played a run very, very tough. It is third down and about four yards to go. Adams again. This time, Abraham cannot break the block. And number 45, Jeff Davis, their fine middle linebacker, or rather strong side linebacker, comes across to make the tackle. It'll be fourth down and about three yards to go. Kentucky will have to kick. The last two plays, Kentucky went with two tight ends, but that Clemson defense, they are tough, and Jeff Davis is leading them again from that linebacker spot. Jenkins is the punter, as well as the quarterback, and he will do the kicking. You see what he's done so far this year. Punting has not been one of their strong suits. Back deep to receive for Clemson, number 24, Billy Davis. High hanging kick. Davis does not call for the fair catch. Is tackled immediately by number 29, David Mears, who is the man who snaps the football, who is a backup free safety on defense, but he comes in to make the long snaps offensively on the kicking down. Good coverage by Kentucky as we look at the starting Clemson offense. Homer Jordan operating the attack. Cliff Austin at tailback. Jeff McCall will be the fullback with Magwood and the great Perry Tuttle, the wide receivers. A 41-yard punt well above his average for Jenkins. First and 10 at the 32 for Clemson. The pitch is to Austin. And Austin picks up about three as he gets it across the 35 before Effley Brooks number 57 and Tony Zach number 58 combined to make the tackle it'll be second down and a long six as we look at the big guys up front for Clemson with Diggs Lee Nanny who they think could be an All-American with Clark Barry Hill Farr and Brad Fisher the other tackle second and about six and a half again it's Austin 
two or three yards is all as he punches it out to about the 38. Kevin McClellan, number 49, and number 70, Keith Martin, combining for the defensive play. It'll be third down and about four yards to go for Clemson on their initial possession. It looks like on those first two plays, Steve, that Clemson has decided they're going to run right at the Kentucky defense. Third and four. On the option, Jordan pitching to McCall, who slips down at the line of scrimmage and is covered immediately by Tom Petty, the right cornerback, a junior out of Indianapolis, Indiana, who came up to cover him there. So, first two possessions by either team will result in punts as we look at the play one more time. This is just the option. He rides the ball to the fullback. Jordan, that is, comes out, is get ready to kick the ball out, but the trailing ball carrier falls down, but the Kentucky had good defensive coverage. Dale Hatcher will do the punting, averaging over 44 yards a kick. Andy Moles is back and calls for the fair catch just inside the 30-yard line. Kentucky will go back on offense first and 10 at their own 30 when we return to Commonwealth Stadium with 12.26 remaining in the first quarter and no score. Following a 31-yard punt by Dale Hatcher of Clemson, who's been averaging almost 45 yards per kick, it'll be first and 10 for Kentucky, their second possession of the game, just inside their own 30-yard line. They have the same lineup in there with Jenkins at quarterback, along with Adams and Abraham, the two running backs, and a pair of wide receivers. Rick Massey will be one of the wideouts, along with number 86, Alan Watson. Well, we talked to Rick about going to that three-back offense, and as you said, they wound up not doing it after all. Well, they may use it as a little surprise here. First and ten. Jenkins wants to put it up. And it's complete over the middle at the 45-yard line of Kentucky. The reception made by Rick Massey, number 20. The tackle made by Anthony Rose. An excellent call. You see the flow go one way. It's a bootleg. And with the linebackers of Clemson being so quick, it's kind of a counter action. A good throw and a good catch to Rick Massey and a tough throw going to his left and throw the ball. A gain of 15 yards and a first down at the 45 for Kentucky. Abraham, the fullback, breaks one tackle and gets five to about midfield. Number 45, Jeff Davis made the tackle on Abraham along with Danny Triplett, number 82. And if you were with us, boy, what a job he did. Rick, that's so difficult to sing into a PA system where you do have yourself coming back on a delay. He did a marvelous job. Just fantastic with no music whatsoever. I'll tell you, I got a cold chill just listening to that young man sing. A gain of six they give him as they mark it near the 49 of Clemson. It is second down and four. Adams. Nothing doing in the middle. Jeff Bryant, number 99, was the first to hit him. A penalty marker is down, thrown in the defensive backfield. A gain of perhaps two yards on the play is all by Adams, and it is offside against Clemson, the preliminary indication by referee R.P. Pete Williams of the Southeastern Conference. We have a split crew of officials working this interconference game today. Williams, the referee from the Southeastern Conference. The umpire, Bobby Reimer, out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. The linesman, Joe Curtis, of the SEC. The line judge is Raymond Bo Menton of the ACC. The field judge, Bill Stanton, of the SEC. And the back judge, Robert Sandell, out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Steve Pete Williams was a great football player at the United States Naval Academy. That's for sure. It is first and ten. Jenkins under pressure. He's sacked. The blitz was on. Coming hard is Tim Childers, the strong safety, number 26. He got to Jenkins before Jenkins could do anything about it. The loss is nine yards, maybe even 10, as they mark it near the 45 of Kentucky. Well, Tim Childers came from that strong safety blitz, and Clemson has 11 sacks this year. That's their 12th. They can put the pressure on you, and they've got to pick up that safety blitz. No question about it to make Kentucky go with their passing game. Officially a loss of 10, second down and 20. Kentucky at their own 45 and a half. Jenkins to throw again. Down the far sideline. And it's incomplete. Juggled for a long time by his tight end, Jim Campbell. He and the defender were fighting for the football. Campbell finally fell to the ground and dropped the ball as Andy Rose and Terry Kennard were both back defending. 
As we said at the top of the show, he likes to go to his tight end, Campbell. There you see Jenkins coming out. Now, he had a chance to run the ball, but Jenkins does not like to run the football. You see the strength of his arm. It was almost a completed pass, but good defense by Terry Kennard made it an incompletion. It is now third down and 20 as you look at Jim Campbell, the fine tight end, senior from Louisville, who lines up on the right side. Kentucky at their own 45. Third and 20. Good protection. Intercepted. No, dropped. The penalty marker is down. They rule it as incomplete as Kennard almost came up with the interception. As you can see, he thought he had it. But a couple of penalty markers were dropped in the Clemson secondary. Here's the preliminary indication from Pete Williams. Interference against Clemson will give Kentucky a first down in Clemson territory at about the 37. Here you see if it was pass interference or not from split backs. Randy Jenkins goes back looking down the middle. Pretty tough, I'll tell you. He was playing the ball pretty well, but I'm not wearing a striped shirt, Steve. Alan Watson, the intended receiver. Kennard fighting him for the football, but interference is called. Kentucky moving deeper into Clemson territory with a first and 10 at the 37. Adams, not much doing there. Maybe about four is all as he gets it inside the 35. They'll mark it near the 33. Danny Triplett, number 82, and Dan Benish, junior 250-pound defensive tackle combined for the stop on Adams. Second down and about six yards to go. Nine minutes, 27 seconds remaining. We still have no score here in the first quarter. Second and a long six. Preliminary movement. The Clemson gets back on side. No, they do not. Penalty marker is thrown. Number 94, William Devane, who's in at nose guard, a sophomore from Jacksonville, North Carolina, appeared to be the one moving preliminarily to the staff. Preliminarily to the staff, illegal procedure against Clemson. Yeah, that's right. But I'll tell you what he did. He probably made a little contact with the offensive lineman because he did get back in time, but when you make the contact, it's an automatic penalty. Big play now, it's third down and one for Kentucky. Third and a long one at about the 28-yard line of Clemson. As you look at Danny Ford on the Clemson sideline. Now they're waiting to get the down straightened around as it is second down. They had third down up on the marker, but obviously with the penalty, it remains second down. And really, it's closer to two yards to go, about a good yard and a half. Now they have the full house backfield in there. It's number 34, Henry Parks, is coming at the other halfback. Jenkins throwing. Plenty of time. Completes it to Parks. Drops the football. I believe Parks has recovered, however, as he and a Clemson defender are fighting for it. And the line judge indicates that it is Kentucky's football. From their three-back offense, he makes the fake right down to the tailback. Now, you watch number 34, Henry Parks. He started his right, comes all the way back to his left. He's got a lot of openings, and all he does is drop the ball. Fortunately for Kentucky, he did recover it. Dan Benish, number 71, is right there as we look at the play one more time. And Again, Benish almost came up with a fumble recovery. Look at all the time he has to throw. It's kind of a little counter pass, faking in the back, and then the back comes all the way cross field. It would have been a big gainer. Now they're going to have to measure for the first down. The chains are out. As the ball is near the 27. And they are short. As you see, that much to go on now third down. Kentucky, Rick, as you said, did have an opportunity on that particular play to gain big yardage, something they have yet done as Danny Ford watches his defense from the sideline. Kentucky's done a good job of mixing up their offense. They're going with the T, running the ball, split backs, passing it, doing an excellent job. Plus, they just passed from the T formation. Making a liar out of me again. <laughs> they have the full house backfield once again as they wait for the chains to be reset with Parks, Abraham, and Adams all in there behind Jenkins. Third down, inches to go. Abraham, the fullback, has that and more as he gets to the 25. It'll be first down, Kentucky at the Clemson 25. We have 
eight and a half minutes remaining in the quarter. Still no score as Kentucky now has moved deeper into Clemson territory with the first and ten at the 25. Abraham, the fullback, gets nowhere. Excellent penetration by Jeff Bryant, number 99, the senior defensive tackle out of Atlanta, Georgia, who slides over, sometime playing closer to the center in that defensive alignment for Clemson. We look at some of the Kentucky fans on hand. Boy, they had some tailgate parties going on this morning before game time. They didn't invite us either. Most of the people <laughs> came into the stadium at the last minute, as a matter of fact. Second down and 10. Abraham again the ball carrier, and again he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Chuck Rose, number 45, was there along with Rod McSwain, the cornerback on the right side who came up very quickly. And Rose, 45, and McSwain, 28, combined for the stop. Abraham gains about a yard and a half, maybe two, to the 18-yard line, where it'll be third and eight. This is where the great defensive teams really stiffen up. They're down inside of their territory. Oh, there is a great shot right there. Abraham coming right at you, and Jeff Davis meeting him head on. I believe I said the 18, it's the 23-yard line, and two wide receivers are on in third and eight. Jenkins avoiding the pressure, Bennett chasing him. Fires it incomplete, intended for Watson on the far sideline. It probably would not have been enough for the first down as well, as Hollis Hall, number 29, was defending against Watson on the play. It'll be fourth down and eight, with seven minutes exactly remaining in the first quarter. And we'll see if, in fact, a field goal attempt will be in order, as Tom Griggs, number three, is on. And you see what he's done in his career. This year, Griggs, in attempting field goals, has been very effective very consistent I believe he's two of four uh, and something like uh, 17 of 25 for his career here at Kentucky from the 30 it'll be a 40 yard attempt will it make it yes just a few feet over the crossbar and with 654 remaining in the first quarter Kentucky has scored to take the lead three to nothing here in this interconference battle between Clemson and the Wildcats of Kentucky Senior Rick Strine will kick it off for Kentucky as back deep to receive 22 Perry Tuttle and 27 Kevin Mack. Mack on the far side, Tuttle on the near side. Strine out of Montoursville, Pennsylvania, kicks it deep. Over the end line, automatic touchback, first and 10 Clemson at their own 20 yard line. Steve, I believe there's going to be a penalty on the kickoff. Number nine, Ty Richmond, I believe, was offside for Kentucky, and they may have to kick it again. The option, of course, will rest with Clemson as to whether or not they want the football at the 20 or whether they want Kentucky to kick it again. After a kick like that, I think you'd almost have to have him kick it over. He almost kicked that thing out of the stadium. <laughs> They are going to make them kick it again as the kicking team is back out. They'll move it back five to the 35-yard line where Strine will kick it again. There's the indication by Pete Williams. And here's the kick again. And you'll be the official. Watch on your right side. The third man in. See right there. He's offsides. The third man in, Ty Richmond. Good call by the official. Strine tees it up again, this time from the 35-yard line. We're in the third quarter, or the first quarter, midway through it, with the three to nothing Kentucky League coming on a 40 yard field goal by Tom Griggs. Strine's kick is a low line drive, it's bouncing. I think it's Austin who takes it about the 15 yard line, and he gets it up across the 30. Pretty good field position now for Clemson as they'll have a first and 10 at about the 33 yard line to start their second possession. Number 38, Joe Freeman made the tackle for Kentucky, a 16 yard return by Cliff Austin. That penalty cost Kentucky 12 yards right there. That's a 12 yard gain for Clemson. High formation with McCall and now Chuck McSwain in a tailback behind quarterback Homer Jordan for Clemson. Fake to McSwain, Jordan. In and out of the hands of Perry Tuttle at the 42-yard line and incomplete. Defending on the play, Kerry Baird, number 22. Tuttle does not drop 
very many passes. Boy, I'll tell you, that is a surprise because that was off a of bootleg action. They faked the ball to Austin, came back. Tuttle came across field, was wide open, and dropped the football. It'll be second down and 10, just in inside the 33-yard line of Clemson. The pitch to McSwain. Not much blocking and good Kentucky defense. McSwain gains perhaps two is all. Number 59, John Grimsley, their fine linebacker out of Canton, Ohio, up to make the solid hit on McSwain at the 35. It'll be third down and about seven and a half yards to go. You will see Grimsley and McClellan, their two linebackers for Kentucky, making a lot of tackles because they play deep. Watch right there. Oh, that's an excellent move right in there. Put his head in front of the ball here. Good tackle, Grimsley. Clemson 0 for 1 on third down conversion. Jordan rolling to throw. And the pressure gets it off. Out of bounds, too tall, intended for his wide receiver, Kendall Alley. Andy Moles was back defending on the play. As you look at Fran Percy and the Kentucky crowd comes to his feet, exhorting their defense on as on fourth down and about eight yards to go. Clemson will have to punt the football away. Dale Hatcher, number five, is back into the game to punt. Andy Moles, number 18, is back deep to receive for Kentucky. Good pressure from Kentucky, but Moles, or rather Hatcher, gets it off. What a kick. Moles inside the 10-yard line, and good coverage by Clemson as they get him at about the 14. Just a super punt. Jeff Suttle, number 23, made the tackle on Andy Moles. That's a 56-yard punt by Hatcher, a five-yard return. Hatcher had a 49-yard average almost, 48.8 in high school, and had one 74-yard kick. What an offensive weapon Hatcher is for Clemson. We talked in the pregame, Rick, about what's happened in the fourth quarter. It's really been a problem for Kentucky giving up, and that's when Clemson has scored a lot. We're in the first quarter, however, as Abraham carries the football and picks up short yardage, a gain of two or three, perhaps, as they mark it at about the 17. It'll be second down and about three. But as I was saying, you can see the difference in Clemson scoring 23 in the fourth quarter, although they've scored 31 in the second. Kentucky giving up a lot of points in the second, or rather, scoring points in the second, giving up a lot in the fourth, Rick. And Clemson's defense is not allowed a point in the second quarter, so we'll see what Kentucky can do here because they have poor field position right now. Gain of three, second down and seven. Abraham just piling off tackle and getting it out across the 20-yard line. They'll mark it at the 21. Number 45, Jeff Davis, one of the first Clemson defenders to get there. And from the 21-yard line, it'll be third down and about four yards to go, maybe a long three. Kentucky's defense receiving almost a standing ovation after holding Clemson the last time, but now some concern being expressed for their offense. They're at their own 21 with a third down and three and a half to go. Jenkins looking over the middle, completes it to his tight end. Number 80, Jim Campbell, who's fighting for yardage and may have picked up the first down as he gets it across the 25. Andy Hedden, number 12, the defensive end who drops off in pass coverage like a linebacker, made the tackle. Well, when Kentucky's offensive line has been able to give Jenkins time back there, he's been able to set, he's been, he's been looking good, and he's been looking right at Campbell, his favorite target. Big first down for Kentucky. That's the fifth first down for Kentucky. Clemson has yet to get a first down. Adams. Short yardage as he brings it across the 30. Near the 32, gain of three or four on the play. It'll be second down and about six to go. 99, Jeff Bryant and 72, Ray Brown combining for the tackle. If you're Clemson, what you don't like is to be behind three and in front of a home crowd like Kentucky has here. They're enthusiastic. They're pulling for their ball club. And each time Kentucky makes a first down, it gives them that much more encouragement. Second down, six yards to go. Abraham has a hole across the 35 to the 36. Their best running play of the afternoon. 
Anthony Rose 21 and 92 Mark Richardson make the stop. They're coming off of their left side and they want to run at Andy Head number 12 the defensive end for Clemson because he's six foot five and maybe not as strong as he should be. And I believe Abraham that time could have turned his shoulders a little bit more upfield. He was running more a little bit east and west rather than north and south. Abraham now has carried seven times and picked up 20 yards. It's third down and two. Abraham again keeping those legs moving and gets very near first down yardage. They needed to cross the 38, but he may have done it. Pete Williams asked for the clock to be stopped and says it is a Kentucky first down. Jeff Davis, 45, made the stop. A good second effort by Abraham. Picked up enough yardage. I'll tell you, if Abraham keeps running like that, they'll have him sing my old Kentucky home with the halftime. <laughs> yeah, remember, he's the one who sang the national anthem. Opening the ball game at the 39-yard line of Kentucky, first and 10. Adams tripped up on a nice defensive effort. Breaking through very quickly. Number 99, Jeff Bryant, to trip up Adams before he could really get underway. He falls right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. Jeff Bryant, number 99 for Clemson, is really explosive off of that line. He gets that penetration. He was in that backfield before that counter could get started. One minute, 52 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Kentucky leading Clemson three to nothing. Second down and 10. Kentucky at their own 39. Jenkins completes it to Adams out of the backfield. Adams almost fumbled the football and is tackled for a short gain at the 41-yard line. Subtle and Triplett combining to make the defensive stop, but Adams almost lost the ball. It'll be third down and about seven yards to go. A penalty marker is down and it appears that it is against Kentucky. It will be just a five yard penalty. There it is. You see it. Now watch. He's, the ball is almost shaken loose from him right there. He's lucky to hold on to it. That's the second time we've seen a back from Kentucky almost fumble the ball. You see number 45 for Clemson, Jeff Davis, the defensive captain conferring with the officials. As the option is theirs. And they're going to take the penalty. They'll mark it off back to the 30 yard line. And it is an illegal use of hands penalty, the five-yard variety. Remember, there are two holding penalties, one of five and one of ten yards now in college football. If you see the official with his palm toward you in that manner, that is the retreat block holding penalty, a five-yard assessment. It is second down, 19 yards to go at the 30-yard line of Kentucky. On the draw, Abraham struggling for yardage, gets back the penalty and then some as he gets it out to about the 39-yard line. 45, Jeff Davis, and number 12, Andy Hedden on the tackle. And we have an injured player down for Kentucky. One minute and 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Kentucky is leading Clemson three to nothing. While they attend to the injured Kentucky player, we'll take a timeout. Fran Kersey, the Kentucky coach on the near sideline in the suit. There is his counterpart, Danny Ford, on the far sideline. Number 65, Steve Rishnak, the starting Kentucky center with the man shaken up. John Madden, a junior from Parkersburg, West Virginia, number 50, is in to replace him. It is third down, 11 yards to go. Kentucky at their own 38. Jenkins gets it away. Too tall, intended for his tight end, Jim Campbell, incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Kentucky will have to kick the ball away. We remind you this program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds now to allow our local stations to identify themselves. You're watching TV 13. Randy Jenkins, who hit a 40-yarder his last time punting this afternoon, is in. And number 24, Billy Davis, the sophomore free safety out of Alexandria, Virginia, is back deep to receive. Jenkins hangs it up. It's very short, however, off the side of his foot. Bounds and takes a Kentucky roll inside the 15, inside the 10. Covered by Kentucky at about the 7-yard line. Take him any way you can get him. Boy, those short kicks and let him roll. <laughs> 
Randy Jenkins, the quarterback, as Steve pointed out, got a 40-yarder the first time. Now, this one looks short that it's off the side of his foot, but this is why that football takes funny bounces. Now, watch it. It just keeps coming. Kentucky people down covering, very intelligent. Sit around, let it go, let it go. Get as much as they can out of it. Puts me up Clemson in tough field position. From their own seven-yard line, first and ten. Kentucky beating three to nothing as we near the end of the first quarter. McCall, the fullback, gets a couple maybe out to about the nine-yard line is all. Number 79, Jeff Smith on the tackle. We remind you this is only the first of two in a doubleheader day here on ABC. Coming up next at 3.45 Eastern time, you'll see Eater undefeated in fourth-ranked Pittsburgh, led by quarterback Dan Marino against South Carolina, or 17th-ranked and undefeated Missouri, battles ninth-ranked and undefeated Mississippi State. Two big games as the second half of our doubleheader here on ABC Today. Second down and eight. McSwain, the tailback. Bumped out of bounds up near the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at about the 14. He needed to get to about the 17-yard line. It'll be third down and about three. As you see the clock running out, that's the end of the first quarter here in Bluegrass Country, Commonwealth Stadium, Lexington, Kentucky, with the Kentucky Wildcats getting an ovation from a capacity crowd of about 56,000 as they beat Clemson three to nothing. In New York, this is Dave Diles, and at New Haven, Connecticut, the middies of Navy strike quickly on the ground. Quarterback Marco Pagnanelli, a one-yard run against Yale, the extra point makes it 7-0. And then Villanueva tries to punt, but Travis Wallington blocks it. Yale recovers in the end zone for a safety. It's 9-0. Navy has since added a field goal. The middies lead 12-0. Now back to Steve Zabriskie. Thank you, Dave Diles. We're back at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. Rick, your old Naval Academy team's doing quite well so far. They are playing super, and I saw their game against Michigan last week, and they just did a great job. Could have won it. It is third down and three yards to go for Clemson. They are inside their own 15-yard line. Uh, Omar Jordan on the option, cuts it back up. He has enough for the first down as they get to about the 22. Nice move by quarterback Homer Jordan to pick up the first down. Don Fielder, 53, made the tackle as we look at the statistics from the first quarter. Really all Kentucky. Just look at that time of position. 11.29 for Kentucky. 3.3 minutes and 31 seconds for Clemson. Big uh, part of the statistics. Clemson with no first downs. Kentucky with six. Clemson has just picked up their first first down of the afternoon on that run by Homer Jordan. We're just underway here in the second quarter. Three to nothing, Kentucky leading Clemson. They've got a problem with the scoreboard clock, and they have called a timeout in an effort to rectify that problem. There you see the time remaining here in the second quarter. Now it's running. They've got it started again. And we're back to play. First and ten. The ball at the 22-yard line of Clemson. The option again. Jordan looking to cut it back up inside. Not much doing there. Number 53, Don Fielder. And number 57, Effley Brooks, the nose guard. A junior from Columbus, Ohio. Made the tackle on Jordan. He punches it out for two to the 24. It'll be second down and eight. That time, the entire Kentucky defense, including Don Fielder, number 53, got off their blocks, shed them, moved down the line of scrimmage, and made the tackle on Homer Jordan. On second and eight. Jordan again running the option, pitching to McSwain. The tailback stepping and falling as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Covered there immediately by number 22, Kerry Beard, the left cornerback out of Franklin, Kentucky, who was penetrating very well and really probably caused McSwain to slip down. It'll be third down and about seven yards to go as they mark it just out of the 25. That's the way you want to defend the option, make that quarterback kick it out before he wants to, and that's what Kentucky did. Jeff Stocksfield, a wide receiver, comes split to the left side as Perry Tuttle goes in motion on third down and seven. Jordan rolling the pass. In and out of the hands of Stockstill at about the 45-yard line, incomplete. Andy Moles, number 18, defending on the play. And again, the crowd comes to its feet. 
in celebration of the job that Kentucky defense has done so far as we look at it again. Big third down play by Kentucky's defense, but that time Stocksdale, number 15, and Tuttle, 22, ran the wrong routes. They were sitting too close together, helped the Kentucky defense. Fourth down, Clemson. Dale Hatcher is on the front. Last time he kicked on 56 yards, and Andy Moles is back deep to receive. This a beauty. Turns it over and sends Moles to the 10-yard line. Picks it up at about the 8. He's trying to get to the outside. He has some blockers. Moles at midfield. Can't get by the last two defenders, but gets it into Clemson territory. It'll be near the 43-yard line, and I believe there is a penalty marker down around the 26 of Kentucky. There may have been a clip on the play. Cliff Austin made the tackle finally, but a great return after a great punt. That's the thing, when he kicks that thing long, he out kicks the coverage. They had the wall set up. Moles did a good job of picking it up. It was a great job, but there is a penalty on the play. 13.04 left in the second quarter. We'll be back. They didn't wait for us to go, and the penalty was for blocking below the waist. Kentucky was moved back inside their 15-yard line. They ran two plays with Terry Henry coming in at quarterback. On the second play, he fumbled the exchange from center. Clemson has recovered this fumble, and they have good field position at the 17-yard line. Here it is again. Jeff Bryant, number 99, recovering the missed exchange between the center and the new quarterback, Terry Henry. Clemson, first and 10 at the Kentucky 17. Henry coming in at quarterback on that last series for Kentucky, but running only two plays. Cliff Austin, the tailback. Fighting through the tacklers and getting it inside the 10. Great second effort by Cliff Austin. Dale Lyons, number 84. The right side defensive end made the tackle. Big turnaround, Rick, as it looked like Kentucky was going to have excellent field position on the punt. First, they had the penalty blocking below the waist, and then on the second play, the fumbled exchange. Well, when you put a new quarterback in the game, that can happen. Second down, three yards to go following the gain of seven by Austin. The ball is about the seven and a half yard line. Kevin Mack. Short yardage as Kentucky's defense closes down. May have picked up enough for the first down. Appears to be about a yard short, however. Depending on where they mark the football, they mark it at about the seven. It'll be. I think they're going to measure for it. Yeah, I was going to say possibly enough for a first down. They are bringing the chains on. 11-28 remaining here in the second quarter. Kentucky leading three to nothing. And the fumble exchange from center by quarterback Terry Henry has put Clemson in good position. They now have a first and goal at the seven-yard line of Kentucky. Brendan Kreit, number 38, is into the backfield. Homer Jordan, the quarterback, leads them up. The first real threat by Clemson this afternoon. Austin puts his head down and gets it to about the three. We remind you that on College Football 81 tomorrow, you'll be seeing highlights of these games, some big ones going on around the country today throughout all the conferences. Be sure to check the local listings in your area for the time of that program. College Football 81 with highlights of college football tomorrow here on ABC. Kentucky now with their backs against the wall. Their defense has done the job so far today. Can they stop Clemson? Austin diving. No indication. He's short of the goal line. It'll be third down and goal as he got it inside the one yard line before John Grimsley and Chris Ferentz made the tackle. This time Austin just goes right over the top. Boy, he wants that touchdown. Excellent effort by Cliff Austin, the tailback for Clemson. Oh man, he just missed it by about two feet, but they're threatening. It is third down and goal. Austin again diving. No indication yet. Clemson is indicating touchdown. None of the officials have raised their arms. Steve, I think the one official on the far side looked like he was going to put his arms up, but uh, didn't. 
Epley Brooks, number 57, the nose guard, was submarining and prevented any offensive penetration by Clemson. Here it is again. You be the judge here now. Look at him going up over the top. Good Kentucky defense. They stopped him right there at the goal line. Very, very close. They, in fact, have marked the football back a half a yard from where it was. They're saying that Austin lost yardage on the play. And at least, Rick, from the angle of our replay, I thought he at least got it through the goal line. Well, I did, too. But you never know. Uh, the officials are right there. They got the best view. And good call. Grant Kersey conferring with referee Pete Williams as Clemson has asked for a timeout now. It's on fourth down and one. They want to be sure that they're straight. They have one more shot at it. And it appears as if they are not going to go for the field goal because neither of the kickers is on, including Donald Iquaviki. Homer Jordan talking to Danny Ford and the offensive coaches. Danny Ford obviously not too thrilled. As we look at the play once again, Austin carrying the ball for the second straight time. You see number 49, Kevin McClellan. He got a little bit of his arm, and it might have slowed him up just a little bit. Here's where the test comes for a defense. Right here, boy. You've got your backs against the wall. Fourth down at about two feet. You've got to make the play. Clemson saying, hey, baby, we're down here. We've got to stuff it in. Nine minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Kentucky leading three to nothing. Clemson, fourth down and goal. As you see, about two-thirds of a yard to go. Austin again. I don't believe he made it. No, he did not. First down, Kentucky. <laughs> 57, F. Lee Brooks. 70, Keith Martin. Stopping Cliff Austin at the goal line. Boy, you're looking right down the line. Now, watch the penetration right here. Look at it now. They just stop him, and that's what you have to do at the goal line. You tell your people, get that penetration. Don't let them get started. Great stand by Kentucky. Kevin McClellan, 49, also helped coming over the top. First and 10, Kentucky. Trying to punch it out. Adams, the ball carrier, gets a yard or two. I believe a penalty marker has been dropped by the umpire behind the defense. John Gay, number 23, the ball carrier, and not 33, Adams as Gay has come in at running back for Kentucky. The Wildcats defense, really the story for them so far, Rick, and they really did it when they had to on fourth and goal. Steve, people might question and say, why would Clemson not kick the field goal? I think that's an excellent call down there. Go for it on fourth down, because even if you don't make it, Kentucky has 99 yards to go for six. The illegal motion, the indication by Pete Williams against Kentucky. It will still be first down. This time, 11 yards to go. It's half the distance to the goal. Moves it right near the goal line. Abraham met right at the line of scrimmage. And boy, Clemson's defense now is really fired up as well. Did not gain much, if anything. 71, Dan Benish, one of the first defenders in there. But you know, when you're on defense in this position for Clemson, you tell your people, you're the offensive people. You've got to beat the offensive lineman to the punch. And that time, the Clemson defensive line, they fired off, and they did beat the Kentucky offensive line on the ball. Second down, still about 11 yards to go inside the one-yard line. Adam, no, it's John Gay. John Gay gets out of bounds short of the first down. As he gets a little more room, however, out to about the eight-yard line before Terry Kennard, number 43, bumps Gay out of bounds. Gay, a freshman from Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Third down and three. If you're the defensive coach for Clemson, you're saying do not let them get out of the sack down there. Do not allow them to make a first down. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. Kentucky leading three to nothing after repelling a Clemson scoring threat at the one foot line. On the option, Henry may have the first down and does as he gets to about the 14. 
thought about pitching it, but gets it and turns it upfield before William Perry and Tim Childers make the tackle. It's another first down for Kentucky, and they've got a little breathing room now. Boy, this is you want a quarterback who can make that decision. Watch him fake that little pitch, get the man to commit outside, turn the ball up right up the field. That's why Terry Henry's in there, because he can run the football. Remember, he was a halfback, a running back in 1980, the second leading rusher. So Henry can run with a football. He's carried three times now for nine yards. First and 10 Kentucky from the 14, John Gay. Breaks through a hole and gets almost five as he gets it out past the 18. Terry Kennard coming up in the secondary with a good hit on the freshman running back, John Gay. They mark it right at the 18-yard line. Gain of four, it'll be second down and six. Kentucky Rick perhaps doing a little better offensively than was anticipated. Well, I think, you know, they've got some pretty good people. They're young people, and they're just going to get a little bit better each game. Abraham may have the first down as he's out near the 25. 82 Danny Triplett, the junior out of Boone, North Carolina, made the tackle, but not before. Richard Abraham picks up another Kentucky first down just inside the Kentucky 25. Each time Kentucky makes a first down, their confidence builds a little bit more and more that they can move the football. Abraham now has carried 11 times and picked up 38 yards. Seven minutes remaining in the second quarter. Abraham again. Straight up the middle for a gain of about three yards to the 28. 71 Dan Benish and 76 Steve Berlin, a freshman from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, combining for the stop. Gain of three, maybe three and a half yards on the play. It'll be second down and seven. Kentucky continuing to go with the full house backfield and the running quarterback, Terry Henry, operating the attack. On the option, chased from behind and dropped by Andy Hedden. 230-pound defensive end Andy Hedden out of Liberty, North Carolina, was coming all the way. And with the reverse pivot that Henry used coming out of there, Hedden had time to catch up with him. Andy Hedden, an ex-quarterback here at Clemson, showed how well he can run. He came from the backside and chased the play down. Randy Jenkins, number 12, coming in at quarterback now as Terry Henry comes out and receives the applause of the crowd for the job that he's done so far. Kentucky four of seven on third down conversions. It is third down and eight. Two wide receivers into the game. Rolling away. Jenkins looking. And completion at the 39-yard line. Hollis Hall made the tackle immediately. But the reception by Rick Massey will give Kentucky another first down. Clemson had the blitz on that time. Kentucky picked it up well. And Jenkins was able to get to the outside, picked up his receiver, Massey, curling to the inside. First down, Kentucky. Now Henry comes back in and Jenkins comes out, and some people here don't like it. That's Massey's second catch for 27 yards from the 38 of Kentucky, first and 10. Abraham, power running play, straight ahead with a lead blocker, gets three to the 41. It'll be second down and seven. Jeff Bryant, 99, and Dan Benish, 71, made the tackle. I believe the reason that Kersey is changing quarterbacks, he's trying to change the tempo of the game. Put Jenkins in, throw the ball a little bit, come back with Henry and run the football. Under five minutes remaining in the first half, Kentucky leading three to nothing. Henry on the option, cutting inside, picking up some extra yardage with a nice move. A short gain of perhaps two yards is all, however, as he gets it out to the 43-yard line, and the gain of two will make it third down and about six yards to go. 82 triplet and 84 Bill Smith on the tackle, and back into the game comes Jenkins. The only thing you risk when you chain those quarterbacks is you might get that bad exchange, you might get that fumble. It's just the risk you take. We saw it happen when Henry came in on his second offensive play. That's when the Kentucky defense had to hold Clemson, and they did. Third down and six. Over the middle, incomplete intended for Adams coming out of the backfield. Almost picked off as Hollis Hall made a diving try for it. Jeff Davis, 45, was defending on the play. It'll be fourth down and six. And Kentucky will have to punt.
Jenkins will do the putting as he is still in the ball game. Last punt, a 55-yarder as both kickers, he and Hatcher of Clemson, have been most effective this afternoon. Billy Davis, 24, dropping back inside his 15-yard line as Jenkins will hit it from his own 35. Another good hanging kick. Davis at the 10. Good coverage by Kentucky down near the 6-yard line. Terry Baird, number 22, one of the first Kentucky defenders to get down there. Kentucky will have Clemson back them again. 3.53 remaining in the second quarter. We'll be back. Clemson with the football first and 10 at their own six-yard line, following a punt of 47 yards by Jenkins and a return of minus four as Terry Baird, number 22, the sophomore defensive back, was down there to cover. Jordan not having success throwing the ball so far with McCall and McSwain in the backfield behind him. McSwain to the 10. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Keith Martin, number 70, on the tackle. We want to remind you that coming up at halftime today as our Fireman's Fund flashback here on ABC, we'll have a look at that great rivalry between the Boilermakers of Purdue and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the half. McSwain now has carried four times for 13 yards. It's second down and six. Clemson at their own 10. The option to McSwain. Nice block on the corner as McSwain picks up the first down and dives to about the 19-yard line. Kerry Baird, number 22, tripped him up. Clemson gets it out from in front of their own goal posts as they get to about the 19 with a first and 10. The down the line option that they like. Jordan just comes right down the line, kicks the ball out to McSwain. He turned the ball right up the field. That's the third first down for Clemson. Kentucky has nine from the 19. Jordan looking to throw. Tipped. It was tipped by the linebacker, number 59, John Grimsley, the 200-pound sophomore, intended for Jeff Stockstill. And the defensive play by Grimsley causes the incompletion, the clock stopping with 248 remaining in the half. Jordan now 0 for 4 passing. It'll be second down and 10, still at the 19. What the Kentucky defense is doing when Jordan, the minute he sprints out, they're trying to get an end to come right upfield and put a hand right in his face and make it difficult for him to throw the ball downfield. Second down and 10. Jordan to pass again. Under pressure, he sacks. Number 53, Dan, Don Fielder, a senior out of Garden Grove, California, one of the first defenders there, along with number 70, sophomore Keith Martin of Owensboro, Kentucky. It'll be third down and a big loss on the play. Reminder that Monday, here on Monday Night Football on ABC, a big game, Atlanta and the Philadelphia Eagles, two of the top teams in the NFC, one of the top quarterbacks as well, Steve Bartkowski and Ron Jaworski going at it. The Falcons and the Eagles, Monday night at 9, here on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Third down and 16 yards to go. Jordan trying to cut it back against the grain will not get nearly enough as he gets just past the original line of scrimmage near the 20-yard line. It'll be fourth down and 10. Kevin McClellan, number 49, the sophomore from Massillon, Ohio, made the tackle. And Clemson will have to kick it away. Dale Hatcher is on to punt. And back deep to receive is Andy Moles, number 18. We'll be back in a minute. Dale Hatcher, who, as you see, has been most effective, is on to punt. Andy Moles has dropped back near his 30-yard line to receive for Kentucky. One minute, 51 seconds remaining in the first half. Kentucky leading Clemson 3 to nothing. Hatcher almost fumbles it, but gets it away from the 10. Line drive. Moles watches it, now takes it at the 28. Back to the 35, and that is it. Number 47, Roy Brown, a sophomore linebacker from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, makes the tackle on Andy Moles, a return of seven yards, and again, a most effective punt, a 52-yarder by Dale Hatcher. That time, Hatcher almost had a costly fumble. He took his eye off the football momentarily, almost fumbled it, but he did get the ball off, got a good roll, 
Kentucky first and 10 on their own 35. Both teams with two timeouts remaining here in the first half. A minute 38 left to play in the second quarter. First and 10 Kentucky just inside their own 35. Jenkins complete to Adams. Adams to the 45 yard line falls forward maybe to the 46. 26 Tim Childers and 82 Danny Triplett were defending as Kentucky's going with the hurry up offense. The chains are set the clock running with 125 remaining first and 10 from their own 45. Looking to the sideline and firing it's complete to number 86 Alan Watson. The junior wide receiver who has the ball right at about midfield for a gain of about five stopping the clock with one minute 17 seconds remaining. Just a little quick pass to 86 Alan Watson. Quick set by Jenkins a little turnout steps right out of bounds stops the clock intelligent football. Jenkins now is six of 11 passing for 50 yards. It is second down five yards to go the ball right at the 50. Jenkins the pass again flips it over the middle intercepted by Clinton picked off by Hollis Hall number 29 as Jenkins just flipped that ball softly Hall anticipated it beautifully and got it. It'll be first and 10 Clemson at their own 44 yard line. We'll be back with 111 remaining in the first half. Hollis Hall number 29 his second interception of the year right there boy and that was a good stop there by Clemson. Kentucky was moving with a minute and 11 seconds left. All Jenkins did was throw the ball off balance. Clemson had blitzed on that play. The Kentucky offensive line picked it up, but Jenkins threw it off balance. Interception, Clemson's ball. First and 10 at their own 43. Jordan wants to pass. Tackled in the backfield. McCall was making the block for him, but the defender fought off the block and made the tackle. Number 94, Dave Lyons, with the big defensive play. A junior from Pikeville, Kentucky, and Clemson is going in a hurry as now we have 51 seconds remaining. Jordan looking to throw again. Throws it out of bounds, stopping the clock with 47 seconds left in the half. That was a good move on Jordan's part. Both receivers were covered here in the sideline. All he did was throw the ball up into the stands so no one could get it, and it stopped the clock. There it is, Navy 12. Yale 9, Yale's coming back. They were down 12 zip. North Carolina State 6, Virginia 3. 47 seconds remaining in the first half. Third down and 10, Clemson. Down the far sideline, too tall. The penalty marker is down, however. Thrown on the far sideline. The pass was intended for Frank Magwood, number 2. And 22 carry Baird. The left cornerback was defending and apparently a pass interference call has been made against Baird at the 35 yard line of Kentucky. It'll be first down Clemson with 40 seconds remaining as Fran Kersey looks on from the near sideline. The clock will start again when the ball is snapped. Jordan who has yet to complete a pass does to Austin. Austin trying to get out of bounds picks up about seven yards on the far sideline at about the 27. He wasn't able to stop the clock right there so they've got to huddle up in a hurry here and keep things going with he 21 did. seconds left. That's right he did not get out of bounds. 18 seconds left as Jordan goes back. Clock still running. Can't find anybody open. A penalty marker is down as Jordan runs it out of bounds short of the first down with 11 seconds now remaining on the clock. And we'll wait to see what the penalty is as 59 John Grimsley ran him out of bounds. But they ate up a lot of the clock on those two plays. Illegal motion, Pete Williams says, against Clemson on the play, which happens quite often, Rick, when you're trying to get going in a hurry. Well, that's why you try to work so much on your two-minute offense. And I really don't understand why Clemson didn't take a timeout there. They had two timeouts left. And as you point out, they lost a lot of time on that clock. Austin's inability to get out of bounds on the far sideline plus Jordan having to run all the way across the field knocked him all the way down to 11 seconds. That's the fourth penalty against Clemson for a total of 33 yards. 
The ball now at the 32-yard line. Second down, seven yards to go, but the important statistic is 11 seconds remaining on the clock. The draw to Austin, and he will go nowhere. Number 57, Effley Brooks, the nose guard, and number 70, Keith Martin, the defensive tackle, both penetrated. And now timeout has been called by Clemson with six seconds remaining. Just the sprint draw right there to Cliff Austin, but Effley Brooks, the young man from Columbus, Ohio, who is the big play guy for Kentucky, made the stop. Three to nothing, Kentucky leading. As you see, six seconds remaining in the second quarter. Kentucky's defense really has been the story for them today, plus the punting by both teams that have kept both teams with relatively poor field position. 56,000 on hand, a super support of Kentucky football here in bluegrass country. And now Iquibiki is in to attempt the field goal. Anthony... Excuse me. Iguabiki will attempt it from the 39-yard line. Six seconds remaining on the clock. It'll be a 49-yard attempt. Peretti is holding a line drive is no good. It just skitters into the end zone. As Iguabiki did not get a good hit at it, he didn't hit the ball very squarely now with one second remaining on the clock. Looked as though Ricky hit that ball too high up on the ball. Well, I'm not familiar with those sidewinders at all, but he did. Matter of fact, they almost had to have trap blocking in the middle. His kick was so low, and I've seen him kick so well. But what happens here, he does. He just gets it up a little high on the football, it looked like there, and he got it low. Big break for Kentucky, not too good for Clemson. Kentucky takes over with about one second left on the clock. Kentucky at their own 33-yard line. Clemson dropping way off the line and a prevent defense. Jenkins dropping straight back and getting some pressure, throwing long as time runs out. It's almost intercepted, knocked down, incomplete, and out of bounds as the first half comes to an end. Terry Kennard back deep defending. The crowd applauding as they really appreciate the effort both teams have put forth today. And as we were saying, Rick, the punting game and the defense, the story so far. And Clemson just hasn't been able to seem to gel their offense at all, just like we've seen in the other ball games. Three to nothing, Kentucky, and we'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message and a word from our local station.